Welcome to Calculations, the talk show. I'm Gary Johnson, and we have a special guest here. We've got filmmaker Will Gore. Will, how are you today? Fine. How are you doing, Gary? Glad, excited to be here. Yeah, man. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad you're here, rather. And uh, I want to talk about what you're doing. But before we talk about what we're doing and you as a filmmaker, give the audience some background about who you are. Yeah, so uh, thank you. So I was, uh, I'm a Navy, was a retired Naval Intelligence Officer. I did that for, uh, for numerous years. And then after that, I uh, worked in defense industry as an engineer, a systems engineer. And I've done that for quite some time. And, and so I have a lot of uh, interests. And besides filmmaking, I decided to do filmmaking, a little, bit of, a little bit of writing. And STEM is a big interest of mine as well. So that's pretty much my background. All right. So you have your own film festival. Would that be safe to say? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, All right, a brother with his own film festival. Love it. Yeah. Well, tell us well, more about that. A couple of them out there. Okay, good. Let's t- yeah. tell us more about that. Yeah. So the reason how I discovered the film festival, and I did a, a documentary film uh, back in 2008 uh, called Clean Mike, and it basically it talked. About, I remember that. You remember Clean Mike? Yes. It comedy. Basically, it was the discussion about you know clean comedy and and comedy has comedy. It, has comedy been used to uh, take advantage of, of ethnic minorities as far as the butt of the jokes? Initially, it started off with clean comedy, but then I started to notice as we were, you know, going to the comedy clubs in New York and D.C., Philadelphia, and some other locations, we started to notice that the the, the minority uh, comedians, uh, African Americans, uh, females, and others, uh, they will make themselves a the butt of the jokes, and those particular comedians seem to get the green light to move on. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So that was Clean Mike. So when I did Clean Mike, we had a chance that we were invited to like 13 different festivals around the country. We did fairly well. And it was then I discovered the film festival circuit, some great film festivals out there. And I saw some amazing films and learned so much at the film festivals. And I was asking myself, well, you know, where can I see these? Normally you don't see these films on television and streaming services. Uh, you know, maybe you could go to the library, but you have to actually know what you're looking for uh, if you go to the library to find these films. So that really got me interested in film festivals. So many years ago, I later on, I decided to, uh, while I was working to, to create my create a film festival, uh, Thriller and Spy uh, concept, you know, because I, I was in the intelligence business for a while and it was called Thrill Spy. And it was the, the first and only, it still is the only international uh, thriller and spy film festival. So I did that in Washington D.C. for about, I think, in about four or five years. So it was, uh, it, was, it was, I enjoyed it. So that's what got me into film festivals. Okay. So your film festival, what's the name of it? It's called Film Team. So basically, it's a uh, celebration of the Juneteenth holiday. So instead of June, it's Film Team. Okay. So what's the future? How do you see this? So the reason I created uh, Film Team is I wanted to celebrate and recognize uh, Black American achievements. I think one of the things that has happened over the years, I've noticed, especially in the uh, environment, is that people have seemed forgotten that the history, the rich history that Black uh, African Americans or Black Americans have uh, brought to this country, actually to the world, and it's kind of been, uh, you know, forgotten. So one of the things then when Juneteenth became a holiday, actually I, I came up with the concept of the festival before I, you know, it was officially a holiday. I said, well, here's an opportunity for the world, not just Americans, but for the world to really see some of the great things that uh, black Americans have done. I'm really big into STEM. It's a STEM uh, fundraiser in many stories. I had my own uh, nonprofit, Vector Scholar, which uh, we teach young kids how to, we, we used to teach young kids how to code, but now that's so, prevalent in high schools really don't do that anymore because we just can't keep up with that. But uh, I wanted them to see all the achievements and the entrepreneurial uh, efforts that uh, Af- that Black Americans have done over the years. And also felt that, you know, I always notice when, especially I grew up kind of in a military environment, uh, going from military bases, to different places here and there. So being in the military, being a military brat, I was used to seeing African-American doctors, lawyers, uh, pilots, engineers, scientists, uh, they were all African, they were all Black Americans, they were all in the military, and they were all from you know America. So I was used to seeing that. 
So when you leave the military environment, there's this narrative in America that, uh, uh, you know, Black Americans, you know, it's unusual for someone, someone to become a lawyer or a, a, thing, a doctor or scientist or whatever. And I just, that wasn't my reality. It's not what I was used to seeing because I was, I would see Black Americans in Europe you know, working, you know, two, two, gener three generations working in the army and in the Air Force and Navy, see them in Japan, they speak foreign languages, you know, not a problem at all. So for me, I think that's the big takeaway for me as I wanted to explain, not explain, but uh, expose uh, many Americans to the achievements that, uh, that Black Americans have uh, accomplished and, and really have changed the world. So that's why I thought Juneteenth would be a perfect opportunity to celebrate that. So what are some of the films that stand out to you that maybe none of us have even heard of, but you would say, you know what, you got to watch this film? Well, we can talk about the films that we have in this year, but uh, okay. there's one film I want to talk about. There are many films out there that, uh, that you know, for many years that I think people should see. One film that really made an impact to me was a film called Black Ice. And my film was you know, on the festival circuit in 2008, I think it was. And I went to the Roxbury Film Festival. There's a, a really nice film festival in Boston, Roxbury Film, Roxbury section of Boston. And there was a film there called Black Ice. And the film was about how in Nova Scotia there were small black communities in Nova Scotia, I believe the town was called Africaville. And they created ice hockey. <laughs> they created the slap shot. And I just couldn't believe it. I said, I, I've never heard this before. Said, yeah, so what, what happened is, you know, in Nova Scotia, obviously, it's pretty cold uh, during the winter months. So they would go out and they would go on the ice and they would play hockey. And then during the summer months, they would come down to America and they would play in the Negro Leagues. So they played baseball at the Negro Leagues in the summer. And then they'd go back to their homes in Nova Scotia and then they play ice hockey. And there were several teams, I think there were at least eight teams across Canada, black teams that were playing uh, hockey. So that just blew my mind. I said, oh, this is unbelievable. First of all, I didn't know there were blacks in Nova Scotia. Number, that was the first thing. So it was part of the slave trade actually, but they were free. In, in Nova Scotia, they weren't just enslaved people. And I did know that they, they perfected hockey. So those are the types of stories that, you know, inspire me to say, hey, there's gotta be more out there. There are more stories out there. But as far as our festival this year is concerned, we have several films. One film that I think is uh, pretty interesting, highly recommend is a film called The Coal Woman. And I don't think people realize this. I didn't know this, but actually in, uh, in, in the Virgin Islands, there were uh, women, black women who used to uh, collect coal for the coal ships. And oh. they, yes, coal, they had coal mines and they, the coals, the coals would be, uh, the coal would be mined from West Virginia. They would put it on trains and ships. They would ship it down to the Virgin Islands. And then ships would come through the Virgin Islands back then during that period of time, coal ships were a big time where, you know, that was the primary mode of transportation at sea. And they would load that coal that came from West Virginia onto those, those coal ships. Amazing story. I had no idea that those types of things were going on. Another great film uh, this, this year, and I'm sure it's very topical, is a film called Stonebreakers. And basically, it's a story about how communities reacted to the taking down of the statues, you know, after the George Floyd protests. Yeah. You know, Richmond being close, very close, of course, you know, they, the situation there. And then, of course, we had in, in Mississippi and Atlanta and other places. But there were several communities, particularly in this film, they talk a lot. They talk about the whole problem with the Italian-American community. Uh, they identify with the Christopher Columbus. So when you take when you took down Christopher Columbus monuments, it was a problem for them, and so you you kind of see that perspective, their perspective, which I never really realized it was so 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 strong in America. And then of course you see that the Black Americans' uh, perspective of you know why these monuments need to come down. So I thought it was a pretty good film. I really I think that's something that uh, people want to see. Another great film is. Our bus is on fire. And that film is interesting because they interviewed students down in the Atlanta 
uh, area. Of course, you have Spelman Morehouse, uh, Atlanta, you know, Clark University. Uh, they were involved in the, you know, the recent election of the, the runoff election between, uh, you know, the senators down in Atlanta and how, you know, Senator Warnock won. But right. it was pretty interesting. That was a powerful political a film I think people might be interested in seeing. Uh, on a lighter side, there's a film called Ball, Balling Abroad. And this film is about basketball players playing overseas. You know, we see so much here, so much about what's going on here in America as far as the NBA and so forth. But there, you know, until the first situation we have with the young lady who was, you know, uh, detained in, uh, in uh, Russia. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. She, uh, but they've been doing the African, uh, Black Americans have been playing basketball overseas for many, many years. And uh, it's an interesting lifestyle for them because they stand out, of course, you know, in, in some places. And this particular uh, basketball player, his name is Sonny Weems. He used to play for the Sixers. He played for the Bulls, uh, Phoenix Suns. And he documented his experiences and some of the challenges that they have as basketball players over there. Uh, but, you know, and probably to me, I think another film that really needs to be uh, well, people have the opportunity to see, learn something. It's Al Roker's productions. He uh, produced a film called Gaining Ground. And basically this film talks about how African-Americans had owned quite, the families owned quite a bit of land, farmland in America. And about 90% of that farmland is now lost. Yep. And that's uh, interesting. I know you have some experience saying you have some experience with farmers and farm black African and black Americans. Yeah, I, think, I can't even say black Americans. I keep saying African Americans, <laughs> but uh, you know that's we that's an interesting story. Yeah, we have a black farmers page on blackmenandamerica.com, and it talks a lot about the land, the, the acres of land that's been lost since really? the early 1900s. Right. Right. Um, yeah, so that, that's a serious, serious story. Yeah. So, and, and, and yeah, that's yeah, that's interesting. So so you can see from the different types of films. Of course, we have um, we have a film we uh, call Citizen Ash. A lot of people don't realize that Ash oh. was a world citizen. And yep. he did quite a bit, you know, quite a quite a bit for people around the world. So that's a really great film. And luckily, uh, we had opportunity to uh, CNN provide that film uh, to us. And uh, and. Kevin Hart donated a film to the festival this year. Uh, he had a film called The One and Only Dick Gregory. Oh, and yes. It, yeah, you know, Dick Gregory, the humorous. I've activist. had some interaction. I've had some yeah. interaction with him during my time. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> actually, uh, Dick, my film, uh, Clean Mike, I interviewed uh, Dick Gregory and Paul Mooney. Talk about yeah. a combination. Oh, my it. goodness. <laughs> yes. And uh, so I had a little bit of experience with uh Mr. Gregory, he could go on and on and he could talk. Oh my about goodness, so can things. he go on? Yeah. If he grabs you, he won't let you go. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> it was funny because when I interviewed him, I was thinking, okay, this, this is a big celebrity. This guy doesn't have a lot of time. And, you know, I've got 35 minutes, you know, so I wanted to be succinct in the questions. And like two hours later, <laughs> he's still talking. <laughs> I was like, Oh, is that it, Mr. Gregory? He said, well, let me tell you a little bit about, you know, the Bible. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. He's a walking encyclopedia, boy. <laughs> yeah, but he was a walking encyclopedia. Very talented experience. I mean, the things that he lived through, the, his perspective is really great. So anyway, the, the, the film is about the one and only Dick Gregory, his life. And I appreciate Kevin Hart for uh, donating that film to the festival. So, you know, really what we're really trying to do this year is we're really trying to build something that I uh, hope that uh, the Juneteenth holiday will be an opportunity for people to bring their families and, and, and loved ones and learn a little bit, you know, and you have fun, it's entertainment. We have other things going on too. But Father's Day is this year uh, and it's Sunday and the 19th is on a Monday. So we're having a jazz uh, performance at the uh, festival this year uh, in honor of uh, this uh, place called the Left Bank uh, Jazz Society. I don't know if you ever heard of the Left Bank Jazz Society? I've heard of them, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the Left Bank Jazz Society was a club in Baltimore back in the 40s, 50s, 60s. I think it was even there in the 70s. And all the musicians, just like in Washington DC, once they would go play at the the non-black places, they would come to places like Baltimore and like in DC U Street, and they would let their hair down and really jam, really have a right. good time. And you know, Duke Ellington, John Coltrane, you name them, they would play the left bank jazz 
uh, Society in Baltimore. So it's a tribute to that. Once again, that's Black American music that's uh, that's gone around the world. So it's made a name for herself. So we're gonna have a performer there, a young lady named uh, Yvette Spear. She's an amazing vocalist. So she'll perform there. And then on uh, Monday, we're going to have a uh, garden party social closing night event. So we're gonna try to you know enjoy ourselves. And in, in my mind, that was a tribute to the many black beaches that were, that were across the country, you know, we had back in the 50s and 40s, 50s, you know, there was a black society yep. that uh, supported the communities and we did things and, you know, you went to your local doctor, you went to your local, you know, educator, schools and things and so forth. And then they had social events, people would dress up, they would, you know, you don't see that uh, portrayed much, you know, typically in tel television and film, it's always, you know, I call it the whole woe is me uh, portrayal of, of Black Americans back in, you know, the 40s and 50s and, and so forth. But no, we were quite industrious and we had strong communities and we had education. The whole Howard uh, University, T Street environment, the Washington Renaissance, you know, Gary, I can go on and on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even I, I've got some friends that live in Highland Beach out there. In oh, exactly. You know? Highland Beach. Right. Highland Beach, you know, and so uh, long time exactly. friends. Yes, and that's Frederick Douglass's home is in Halloween. That's right. So that's that's the whole idea. The reason why I wanted to do a garden party social because I wanted to people to remind people that you know, you know, although I I enjoy hip hop, uh, those people back in the thirties, forties, and fifties, you know, they had it pretty rough, but they were determined to keep their community together, and they educated and they enjoyed themselves, and they created a family environment. So to me, it's somewhat of a tribute to places like uh, Cars Beach, Highland Beach. Uh, American Beach down in Florida. And now, of course, I'm sure you all heard about the, I'm sure you've heard about Bruce's Beach in, in Los Angeles, how that was, you know, giving back to that family. Yeah, I had my first trip to uh, Martha's Vineyard last year. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. The beach up there, you know, I got yes. a big education about Black yes. life in uh, yes. Martha's Vineyard. Yes, absolutely. So the, the, the location and the date again for your film festival. So the festival is two days. Uh, if you remember, it's Juneteenth, so it's the 19th. So it's Saturday, it's Sunday, which is the 18th, and then it's also Monday the 19th. It's going to be at Bethesda, uh, suburb of Washington, D.C., uh, right on the uh, metro line there, at a place called the Landmark Bethesda Row. It's a, a, a theater. And then we're also going to have performance uh, screenings at uh, the Imagination Stage, which is another you know, theater venue in Bethesda. And the garden party social will be also be in Bethesda, but that'll be at a a uh, a, a nice cafe bakery uh, right there in downtown uh, Bethesda. So that's where the events are this year. Okay, is there a cost associated? Yes, there is. Uh, what we have about 22, 23 films this year, and it's only twenty dollars for twenty three films. That's less than a dollar film. Got it. And so, give us the uh, e give us the website address again. So it's, you think of Juneteenth, uh, you, instead of June, it's film, F-I-L-M, teenth, dot org. So it's easy to remember, and uh, hopefully people will visit and, and okay. check it out. We all right, folks, there you have it. Filmmaker Will Gorham, he's got all the stuff. He told you about the films. You need to get out there. You spend that money. <laughs> Forget it's not about much Subway. money. It's not it's much money, you know. Money you know, so instead of going to Subway for a couple of footlongs, enlighten <laughs> yourselves and get out there in Bethesda. Yeah. Yeah. Learn a little bit about uh, about Black Americans uh, history and and enjoy yourselves and, and a little bit of jazz. Enjoy a little bit of jazz. And we're hoping every year we we bring more and more. we want to encourage more and more films. The one thing I like to say, Gary, first of all, I want to thank you very much for inviting me to to have this uh, interview. Uh, but I want to stress to, to, to most people, this film festival is a boutique film festival. It is not designed to launch films to, into Hollywood. So we're not really trying to bring in uh, films that may win the Oscar next year. We're more about educating uh, the public, uh, more about uh, awareness and entertainment as well. But it's not a film festival you know, like the others, I think there's some great film festivals out there, like this ABFF, you know, there's Martha's Vineyard. Pan-Africa is one of the biggest and the largest, 
the best film, one of the best film festivals I've ever attended. Uh, but we're a small boutique, uh, more about education, more about uh, experience and history. And uh, so I just wanted to make sure everyone realizes it's not a place to come and see celebrities. They were not really there. If they happen to come, not to be interested, but you know, we're in the Washington DC metropolitan area. So our, our demographic is a little bit different, different concerns more so than what you would get in Hollywood. Okay. All right, Will, I appreciate you being on the show. We will stay in touch. Yes, Everybody, you. Will Gorham, you can learn more about Will on our website, calculationstalkshow.com and on blackmeninamerica.com and all of our social media platforms. For Gary Johnson and Calculations Talk Show, we'll see you next time.